a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And starting in eight, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for I, for I bring bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let that be our prayer today. Glory to God in the highest. Good morning, everyone. So good to see each other. Amen. I'm glad to be seen. Just think we could be under the ground somewhere. But here we are, rejoicing in the Lord this morning. Amen. My favorite time of the year. Next to Turkey Day, of course, but uh, Christmas is my favorite day of the year. And I want to let you know that we will not have a candlelight service this Christmas because of all that we've gone through. And uh, I have to leave right after service next week to be with my wife. And um, but, but we're going to celebrate at the end of the service next Sunday. So I want some of you ladies and some of you men who know how to make, make cookies and whatnot. We're going to set up a table in the back. And after the service, we'll just have a little Christmas party. Can we do that? How many of you would bring something? One, two, three. Okay, okay wonderful. Wonderful. So we'll plan on, on, on doing that. So don't leave right after the service. And I think it's time for us to, um, to gather together. You know what that means, right? It means you don't have to isolate yourselves anymore. Not to the point where you don't like each other. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. You know, we, we're so careful to stay away and you think that we've got issues. But no, we're trying to be careful. And that's very well, well understood. I want to thank um, Wanda, who's been so faithful to um, always be here to, to lead worship and uh, does such an excellent job. If you, yeah. Okay. And I guess somebody who doesn't get very much recognition, Bill and uh, Mikhail back there at the controls. You know, we had some issues at the beginning of the service and they just ironed things out like they always do and we move forward and got it done. Amen. And a special thank you to Pastor Anne Marie the faithful servant of the Lord. Amen. And I always say that she reads so well. I love to hear her read, especially the word of the Lord. And uh, we thank God for her. Lisa, I want to say thank you. You've been an inspiration to me personally, and I'm sure to many that um, folks don't realize the, the magnitude of what you do. And I heard that there were some issues last week where folks insulted you. I cursed that in Jesus' name and sent it right back to the, the sender. Amen. So you just be at peace. I know that you, but you're doing exactly what God told you to do, okay? So let's just celebrate Lisa this morning for what she's doing. Thousands have been saved through her ministry, and thousands more have been fed also. So thank you for your diligence. Now put a smile on your face. I like that. That's good. And, of course, to uh, Pastor Tyrone, who, um, like, he comes in, he just wants to make sure everything's in order. He takes the bathroom seriously. He makes sure they smell good for you guys and, and uh, clean up and... Uh, it's always good to see a man who's diligent to serve the Lord, not just from the pulpit, but away from the, the, the platform, even. And for those of you who haven't been here for a while, welcome, welcome home. It's so good to see your faces, and uh, I thank God that uh, we found you. Now, we, we left you some breadcrumbs, but the birds got them. But somehow you found your way, and we want to say welcome home. And all of you who are now temporarily at Holy Ground, God bless you. It's been quite a season, hasn't it? And I thank God that we can say that we've overcome. And why? Because Christ himself is the overcomer. He's over overcome. Amen. Praise God. We're going to receive the morning offering. I'd like you to be generous. We're way behind budget this morning. And um, as you know, we have several guests coming in. Uh, Scott was here last week. And he did such a great job of leading worship and bringing the word. And then uh, LaDonna, I don't know if you've ever seen her. She's the lady I sing with, the, she plays the violin, but we've been together for 20-something years, I guess 25 years, ministering across the nation. And she's going to be here on, on next Sunday, on the first Sunday in uh, next month with her violin, and then she's bringing some, some compliments. So we, we don't want to miss that. Amen? 
It's going to be gl glorious. And then I was with uh, Dr. Thomas last night, Zach's mom, who is looking forward to being here also 14th, 15th, and 16th of January for revival meetings. Isn't it about time we come and gather together and, and have revival? Just, just get soaked in the word. And um, so we're looking forward to seeing that. She's in great spirits. And she brings her greetings to her home church, she says. This is a home church. So we're, we're excited about that. Well, hallelujah. The ushers are coming now with envelopes for your giving. Would you also um, lift your hands if you'd like to have one? And make sure that you sign your name so we can read it and uh, send out the tax forms at the end of the year. And also, be generous this morning. Uh, I, would, I would ask you to, yeah, just stretch it a little bit further than, so we can meet all the needs that we have. And Bill, you're going to come afterwards? You're going to take care of that? I won't be here, but it's fine. I mean, in service, yeah, okay. All right, fine. Praise the Lord. If you can, would you stand with me this morning as we present our giving before the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. I want you to look at what you're bringing to the Father this morning. Now, I want you to sit this with me. I come believing that God is my source. What I'm bringing is what he's given me. Every good and perfect gift comes from he, the living word, who loves me so much. So today, I return that which belongs to him. And Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you just bless your, your givers, your lovers, your children, your, your people. Father, I thank you that you're, you're the God of prosperity. And even though some don't have much to give, Lord, multiply to them so that they can say, look, God, I bring all that I have for you. Now, those of you who um, have nothing to give, just put your hand in your heart and say, God, I give you my heart. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. So you may be seated as we receive the offering in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Of course. I guess uh, Sister Wanda has many hats, so she's going to talk with us for a while. You know, Father Abraham many, had many sons. I have many hats. <laughs> Can you sing that for many hats Father song? Abraham, I know. <laughs> I just oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> also, I want to thank you, each and every one of you who have made this your home, the place where you worship. As we heard last week, we had a guest that said that the travel all over spring here looking for a little church to um, attend and she said so many churches were closed and so many had very few members. Well, Leonard and I, Deacon Leonard and I went down to see Bill Matibi and, and Dorothy in Plant City this, this Friday. And uh, he said he was searching around also for the same, looking for a place to land. And uh, he says the, the churches are closed and some large churches have 10 people. And, you know, we're not looking at numbers, but I look at your faces, I look at your hearts. And you've been so faithful to keep these doors open. And I congratulate you for that. You know, we're a family. Yes. And the Bible says we're not to, to turn away ourselves, but to assemble ourselves together. Amen. So thank you for being generous. Thank you for being the people that, of God that you are. And as a family, we can make this happen. Amen. We're not going to close these doors. We're not going to turn off the lights. We're going to just receive what God has for us and continue in the journey as he's instructed us to do. Wanda has a announcement to make. Before I start my announcement, Bill, could you come up here for just a second, please? Um, while he's coming, I just want to remind everyone we have the Christmas basket forms. I'm asking for the first name, age, and gender of any children that are in your home. If your family needs a basket or needs assistance with gifts, fill one of these out. You can see one of our ushers um, for the form. Um, my phone number is on most of them. If you don't, if my number is not on there. Um, you can ask for my number. Um, I am leaving early today, and I won't be here next week, but these forms are due hopefully today. Um, if not, bring, please bring them next Sunday, and Bill will make sure that I get them, or at least get the information. Okay, now, Bill doesn't like this, so I'm doing something very against his character, but you all, 
Pastor just talked about how much we appreciate Bill and Mikhail and Anne Marie and myself, different people who work in the church. But you guys don't understand how tirelessly this man does a lot of things, not just for the church. His hands are in, he wears a lot of hats too. But last week he celebrated something very special. It was his birthday. So <laughs> this morning, if you could all stand if you're able. <laughs> He's putting on. He can, <laughs> I surprised him too. Oh, he wanted you wanted him to shut my mic off. Oh, I get it. Are there any other December birthdays in the church? Mary Ann Henry? Anyone else? Any other December birthdays? Hmm? December birthday. Well, this is for each and every one of you. Who else? Chuck. Oh, yeah, he's in the office right now. So we'll remember to say it to him as well. So if you're ready. He's looking. We could also do it a cappella. Happy, like. birthday Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. You're getting old. God bless you. Anything you want to say? We're good. <laughs> and God bless everyone for God their bless birthdays everyone. this month. Yes, amen. I love the family church. Glory to God. Before uh, Pastor Tyrone comes to receive, what to uh, present the um, message this morning. For those of you just getting here, God bless you. Welcome. Good to see you. And it's your birthday this, this month, right? You made it just in time. We could have missed that song. Yeah. Praise God. God is so good to us. Just to bring you a message from Bill TV. Um, you know, Dorothy is in a nursing home and um, we're just believing that uh, that she'll, well, that God will have his way. And um, Bill, he um, he's lost over 100 pounds, poor guy. He's uh, He doesn't seem to be suffering because he's all alone because uh, he has his dogs, which is always a comfort. And, but pray for them. They need serious prayer, especially at this time of, of the year when family need to be so close. Amen. And um, so with all that said, let's uh, welcome our dear pastor as he comes. Come, my brother. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord, saints. Give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Who else besides me had a tough week this week? A tough week this week. When there's, when there's nothing else you could say, all you could say is, Jesus, Jesus. We just sang the song. When there's nothing else you could say is, Heavenly Father, help us. I think Haxatan knows our schedule, Anne-Marie. I think she knows our schedule because he pours it on. When? You are truly getting ready to do God's work. When you're about God's work, he'll throw it on. I remember when I was in the world, he didn't care about me. He didn't care about me. But because I'm, my life reflects who my Heavenly Father is, we all are targets. We all are targets. But he who's in me is greater than he who's in the world. Bow your hearts with me this morning. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to reflect who you are. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. My Lord, my strength, my Redeemer. As I decrease, Lord Jesus, you increase. And let every word that you put on my heart last night, Lord, and this week be exited out of this vessel. Nothing of me, Lord Jesus. Let them see you. Download your spirit this morning, Father. I need you. 
The people need you, Lord Jesus. Those on the screen need you, Lord Jesus. Speak to their hearts, Father. That way there is truth and there's change because truth brings change. So we give you the glory, honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Let's stand for a few minutes. And our thoughts and our prayers goes out to those in Kentucky and those six, six, six states that the horrible tornado flattened. As you look at the images, this is a sidebar. I want us all to reflect on our lives, look at our lives. The things that we put high esteem so important doesn't really matter anymore as you get at a certain season in life. I look at those images this morning, roofs flattened, house flattened, deaths. 110 people going to work in the candle. Apparently this was the biggest employer in the, in the area, candlelight factory. They were up in production, so everybody was, in, was at work that night to produce these candles for the holiday. As you look at the images, it was completely flattened. And all people were crying out, Lord, save me. Lord, the cries was, Lord, help me. It made me took an account for my life at this season to glorify him and him alone. Nothing else shall get in his way. We are tasked with gifts in our lives to glorify him. The cars didn't matter. The home didn't matter. The Christmas trees that they were about to pick up, put up, and all the things for the season didn't matter when that tornado came true. Six states. Our thoughts and our prayers go out to them. Like I said, I had a heavy week this week. Situations like. And when these things do happen, we hear it all the time. Let me call Anne Marie, see if she has enough strength to, <laughs> to deliver a message today. I told the pastor I want to call off sick. <laughs> but God reminded me who I am and who he is. He reminded me. And he showed me he's faithful. No matter what, he's faithful. He reminded me. So he took me on a journey of his faithfulness and woke me up. I said, Lord, I, I'm sorry, Lord. So that's the, the title of the message, faithfulness. Faithfulness. Our God is so amazing. When you struggle with something, he comes from the other corner, the other direction to remind you of who he is. Let's turn, go straight. And I want to stay close to the chat, to, to the scripture verse because it speaks for itself, basically. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. Let's start right there. You all could read along with me. Get in the spirit. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Faithful servant, well done. That's our desires. That's our truly our desires. When we meet our shepherd, our, our father, in the end, we want to hear him say, well done, faith, good and faithful servant. And I looked at this while I was reading it. And I said, the master replied, well done, good and faithful. Why did he use that word faithful? Could he use well done, servant? Well done, 
blank, faithful. Because he honors faithfulness. I'm going to start right here and say, if you have a partner that is faithful to you, honor them. Honor them. Faithfulness. You got an employee that's faithful, shows up and faithful. They put a lot into it. Bless them. Bless them. Because faithfulness, if our Heavenly Father honors faithfulness, who are we to do just the same? He honors faithfulness. Jesus would declare, well done, good and faithful servant. Of all the possible words that he could have used. I said, faithfulness? So let's explore faithfulness the way he showed it to me as I was going along in my journey. We're going to take a journey. Because Jesus favored rest. He, he, he favors resting and being a faithful servant. And to, for him, it obviously meant so much to him to be faithful. And we're going to continue with nine highlights that I pointed out last night as I go along with the faithfulness. So the first one, well done, good and faithful servant. That's important because as we go about our journeys, we have to be faithful in everything that we do to him. First, put him first. Faithful in putting him first in everything that we do. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11, 13 through 15. This is the second one. So if you are faithfully obeying the commands I have given you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain onto your land in its season, both autumn and spring. Rain so that you may gather in your grain new wine and oil. Second one, well done, good and faithful, O bears. O bears. Why? Because he gives a command. I'm giving you today to love the Lord with all and to serve with all your heart and all your soul. Then I, then I will send rain on your land. It showed me that Lord, the Lord don't bless what we do. That we ought to do what he blesses. Because he give commands for us. That way we could honor him in his purest form. Well done, good and faithful obeyers. A servant learned that the Lord's command and obeyments is not to, for him to rubber stamp what we do. That we does his agenda, the Lord's agenda. That's the only one that counts, or God's agenda. That we honor him. And it really, I thought about it and I said, Lord, how many things have I asked you to do and it was my agenda rather than your agenda? And I look back and I said, wow, forgive me, Lord. Because quite honestly, there's a lot of things that we do and we want God to bless it. Rather than we do what God has already blessed. That's what, where we ought to go. That's number two. Well done, good and faithful obeyers. Let's go to number three. Well, let's go, before we go to number three, hold on one second. Hezekiah gave orders to prepare storerooms in the temple of the Lord. And this was done. Then the faithful brought in the contribution, tithes, and dedicated gifts. We talked about tithing earlier. 
Second Chronicles 31, 11 and 12. Verses 11 and 12. Hezekiah gave orders to prepare storerooms in the temple of the Lord, and this was done. Then they faithfully brought in the contributions. He gave orders, then they brought the contribution, tithes, and dedicated gifts. Kanai, a Levite, was in charge of these things, and his brother, Shemiel, was next in rank. Tithes and offering. We heard so many sermons about that. We know that we ought to give our, our tithe, 10% to our, our churches, and above that, the offerings. So the th third one I would say is, well done, good and faithful tithers. God honors faithfulness in our tithing, in our gifts and tithings. And I would even go further. Our talents, our time, our gifts, he honors that. Faithfulness. He's faithful. Well done, good and faithful titers. And we're gonna show we're gonna see that in Second Chronicles. And this is a journey he took me on when I was in a sad slump. He showed me, I am faithful to you. He said, I never give up on you. You want to call in sick? You, you was given an opportunity to speak on my behalf. And I, you know, I'm having a conversation with the Lord. Excuse me, I'm having a conversation because I was in one of those moments. And we all go through those moments. And you speak to him and then he takes you to the word. And the word illuminates who he is. And then it didn't make no sense to me at all what I was complaining about. Second Chronicles 34 verse 12. The men did the work faithfully over them to direct them where were Jonah and Abiah, Abadiah. Levites descended from Mari, Marari and Zechariah and Meshulam descended from Kohath, Kohath, the Levites, all who were skilled in playing musical instruments. But I want to pay close attention to the men did the work faithfully. The men did the work faithfully, repairing the temple in the king's Josiah day. So number four, well done, good and faithful workers. We heard a passage just now mention a few names of people here in the church that are faithful in the sound booth here in the church. It takes a team to work, an operation. An operation is as strong as its weakest link. And we got a lot of strong links around here. And I thank God for that here in this house. The reason these doors are open simply because faithfulness. I'll just put it blunt. Faithfulness. People show up to do God's work. Well done, good and faithful workers. It is not just preaching and witnessing, but sometimes faithfully showing up to work. Church cleanup. It took me a while to understand faithfully showing up, faithfully doing God's work. And I understand, God showed me why it was so important, faithfully. He showed me why, because my heart wasn't right. And I'm going to tie that in. My heart wasn't right. Because when your heart is right about something, it makes it a whole lot easier to do whatever God tasks you to do. Cleaning up. As you said, I never see him miss, miss a day in the sound booth. It took his time. 
schedule. It's time. And there's still more ministries out there to children ministry to come. Uh, there's so many more ministries that will be culminating from this wonderful church here. I finally learned to understand because we have a shepherd that he hints to us men and women. That mailbox is kind of old, isn't it? <laughs> he don't tell you to do things. It took me a while, Zach. Those lights are kind of dim, aren't they? <laughs> so I had to realize, you know what? He's speaking to me. <laughs> hey, the church look kind of like it might need some vacuuming. You know? And that's good to, that's a great motivational tactic to use. Because we had to grow into understanding. Now we see the things that needs to be done. We don't even, we don't even wait for him to hint no more. We go with each other. Hey, Zach, what you think needs to be done? We like, we come in here, we look around and we, what a great opportunity to serve. As we grow and understand, that's what it's all about. It's not only about our agenda, but God's agenda. Took me a while to understand that, but now I get it. It not only helps here, it transitioned everywhere else. It's transitioned in my home. I don't wait for my wife to tell me to do things no more. I look around. And I'm a night worker. I like to work at night. Clean at night. Do things at night. There's a saying. Do all you can to bless others. Do all you can to serve. Do all you can to help, not only with your mate, but friends and family, but don't get caught. If you're doing it to get caught, then it's not the right motive. Do all you can, don't get caught. Faithfully, well done, good and faithful worker. That's very important. Let's continue what the Lord placed on my heart. He gave me a lot of verses. And at the time I were done, I said, Lord, thank you. He made it clear to me. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. As I spoke earlier, this is what I was referring to about. You are the Lord God who choose Abram. And brought him, that's before his name had changed to Abraham. And brought him out of Ur, of the Chaldeans, and named him Abraham. You found his heart, ha, that's, that's where I'm trying to get at. You found his heart faithful to you, and you made a covenant with him to give to his descendants in the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, and Amorites, Perizzites. Jubasites, and all the ice. You have kept your promise because you are righteous. We serve a righteous God. He honors faithfulness. And because he honors faithfulness, look at what he, his blessing was. Your heart, as I said earlier, once your heart is right, it's easy to do all the rest of the stuff. It's easy to honor. It's easy to do the things that you are called upon to do. It's easy to serve the Lord because your heart is right. His heart was right. And God knows. He don't push you into obligation for you to do something. Tugs you slightly till you get it. Once you get it, then, as you heard, it's easy to do things now for the Lord when he calls upon you, especially if you have, he already gifted you with certain gifts. We all have different gifts. 
And if you take those gifts and utilize them for our Heavenly Father, he's happy. He's excited. He's faithful. As you see, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek him with those gifts. God, here am I. Here am I, Lord. It took me a while to understand. Well done, good and faithful heart. That's number five. Well done, good and faithful heart. Faithfulness springs from a godly heart. Growth comes out of a godly heart. That's what faithfulness, what happens when you have a godly heart. Things become easy to do. A heart where God is number one. God has to be number one. That makes it a whole lot easier. We could just that alone. Everything in this message she was showing me, God is faithful and we ought to be faithful also. And it starts with God first. He has to be first. When your heart is right, faithfulness becomes a whole lot easier. Well done, good and faithful heart. That's number five. Let's continue. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6. And I want to stick with the verses because I think this would help someone here today. Many a man claims to have unfailing love. We were talking about that Tuesday night. Love. Unfailing love. But a faithful man who could find him. <laughs> yeah, we can laugh about that. We can laugh about that. I remember sometime back, a bunch of men stood around and said, we got your back. When the dust and the wind settled, they all disappeared. You know what I'm talking about. We got your back. When trials and tribulation comes, where did they go? Let's read it from... Could you stand and read that from our MOV virgin, Pastor Dan? <laughs> Amen. Are they talk telling the truth? Wow. There's another saying that I, we go by, talk is cheap. Y'all heard that. Talk is cheap. Faithfulness is demonstrated not just by words, not just from my mouth. It's amazing. I even heard sometime back, we had some first time visitors way back. First time visitors came in. And we, we have beautiful services. The music was going beautiful. And sermon, the Holy Spirit was moving. We were clapping, we were cheering. And I watched the family. This is what we have been praying for. This is what we've been looking for. And I believed them. They even went back there, and Andy, could we get some materials to give out to our family? Could we get some handouts, Andy? To give to our family and to our friends. We give them handouts to our families and friends. The next Sunday I came. I was all excited. I know they're going to be sitting right in that corner. Never saw them again. Faithful. Faithfulness. It's what God is looking for. Like they said, this is what we've been praying for. It's important to let our words speak the truth. If th that's not so, then we ought to not speak them. Because it's in people listen and they hear 
And I had to learn that myself. And I thank God for our shepherd because he wouldn't say a word unless he knows. It's truth coming out of his mouth. And I just watch and I look. And it taught me a lot in my growth. I always say this tongue that we have is so dangerous, God had to provide a cage, which is your teeth, to keep it behind that cage. And recognizing that God honors what you say also. He honors your faithfulness. He honors what comes out of your mouth because we are truly a reflection of him. In what we say, what we do, and truly how we understand him. Matter of fact, let's turn to Jeremiah 23, verse 28. Wow, here we go. Let the prophets who has a dream tell his dream. But let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. But look at this. But let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. Let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. Number seven. Well done, good and faithful speakers of my word. It reflect. This gives us opportunity not only to witness, but to speak his word. Opportunity to teach class. Opportunity when you're teaching young kids Sunday school, speak God's word. As you heard earlier, we love to hear when Elder Ann speaks because she does so much research and I, I just sit there and understand her depth of knowledge. And that only comes by diving into God's word. And it now allows me to say yes to the opportunity to get into his word more and more to speak God's word. God honors faithfulness in speaking his word. Well done, good and faithful, faithful speaker of God's word. Ezekiel, one more chapter. Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 11. Well done, good and faithful speaker of the word. Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 11. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We've taken a journey on the verses that he showed me, which was nine, nine well done verses. This will be for the consecrated priests, the Zadagazites, who were faithful in serving me and did not go astray as the Levites did. When the Israelites went astray. Let me read this again. This will be for the consecrated priests. The Zadazites. Who were faithful in serving me. And did not go astray. As the Levites did. When the Israelites went away. Number seven. Well done. Good and faithful. Keeping. Keep serving the Lord. As we heard earlier, when, when things happen in life, cancer, diabetes, gout, diseases, loss of job, situations in life, it doesn't change who God is. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When we go through situations in life, it doesn't change who he is. As the verse said, this allotment of land will be for the consecrated. In serving me, 
and did not go astray. Well done, good and faithful serving the Lord. Because we ultimately serve in the Lord. Through every circumstances, every circumstances that we go through, we still have to serve him. Sickness, situation in life, we still have to serve him. He honors that. As you saw earlier today, Bill from the Sambu, he honors. He had stuff going on in his life. Mikhail back there serving the Lord. He got, we all got stuff going on. But ultimately, it's to serve the Lord. And by him honoring that, he would guide us through the difficult situation, the difficult task that we go through. Even when such, and God always show you somebody next to you that's going through something. That when you look at your situation, it doesn't seem that bad after all. When I got up this morning, I saw Kentucky all flattened. What a, Houses demolished. Lives were lost. No reason to murmur and complain about anything. Our shepherd encouraged me because we all go into stuff. And God reminded me that he's still faithful. He's still on the throne. And as I was going through my pity patty, Aunt Marie, he reminds me, I'm faithful no matter what. And I had to stop and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive my transgressions. I heard Mikhail last week, a couple of weeks ago, say he's, you know, he said yes to God's will. And then, then came the trouble, the trials and tribulation. But yet you're still here. Thank God for that. Yet you're still here. So many people are going through, but they continue to serve the Lord. And that's what God was trying to show me. Despite what you go through, Tyrone, serve me still. Continue to serve. Despite what is happening, serve. And boy, I was tempted to go onto my covers and forget about everything. And God said, that's not an option. That's not an option, Tyrone. That's not an option. I think I'm speaking to myself about that. You know, there's times you want to say, run away. You want to get away? And God said, that's not an option. And then he shows himself so real. Then he shows himself so real. And, and you know what? The things you're running away from, God is saying, no, that's your ministry. No, I'm using that to glorify me. That's your ministry. That's what he said. I'll never leave you or forsake you. His word. He's able to do exceedingly abundant, if we allow him to do it. The things we're running away from, he's birthing a ministry in us. And that's what I had to come to realize. Let's bring this in for a landing because I know his, he beat me up with it. And I'm glad you're taking the journey with me because sometimes we go through things and God reveal himself through his word and he reveal himself into, and there's so much throughout the Bible of his faithfulness to us. He just showed me a couple that made me realize it's not that bad after all, Harry. First Peter chapter four, verses 10. Let's bring this on. Let's turn to first Peter chapter four, verse 10. Ten. Each nice, I mentioned this early. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully. 
administering God's grace. That's important. Administering God's grace in its various forms. No more did I see this evident, as I said about Mississippi and what happened with a tornado. No more did I see it ever. Neighbors helping neighbors. No house, but they're helping each other. They came together. Helping each other. Looking out for each other. If we have time to fight with one another, we have too much time on our hands. Neighbor helping neighbors. Given of themselves. What I saw, they're given of themselves. A small town. But they're looking out for each other. And I think that's where God is trying to get us back to. We help in one another. Family. Family. He's, I think this is a season where he's calling. I, th I truly think we have gotten away from that. Truly, our first ministry, yes, is at home, even at homes. Everybody got a TV in their room. <laughs> I remember the day we had to sit and wait till, till my mother made dinner, and we all sat at the table to eat dinner. You better not take no food upstairs, downstairs, or in your room. you get a good whooping. The table, we all sit at the table and eat. We discuss. We talk. I remember. Mommy said, okay, food is ready. Get everybody. Let's come to the table. We got away from that. Every gift. Well done, good and faithful. Use the gifts and grace that I have given you to comfort one another, to help one another with grace. To bless one another. To pray. They were praying for one another. They were praying. People going through stuff that, could you pray for me? Could you pray for my family? That's a gift. Pray for one another. People going through, Lord, I lift you up through all this. Let your will be done. Let this glorify you, Lord. Pray for one another. That's all that matter. They put God first. They put God first. In all the tragedy that happened, they put God first. No more did I see it more evident than the, all the clips that I saw. The mayor, the governor, could you, I want everyone to pray for my city, for my town. Lifting God up first. And God will turn it around. These gifts of healing to those in need of a touch. I'm going to go a little personal right now. When my wife, she's probably watching on live stream, so I got to watch what I say. When she came down with stage four cancer, I had no clue. Had no clue of what to do. She had no clue. We went all over the country trying to figure things out. Harry, we went all around. Texas, MD Anderson. And even then, God provided a way. He showed us. I said, I can go to, I can't go to Texas. God brought someone in a church and said, You go to Texas with my wife. Could you believe that, Harry? I knew I couldn't. You know, because it, it costs money to, to maintain. It costs money to do things. And God said, don't, 
That's my job. You stop worrying, Tyrone. I'm going to take care of that. And I watched this young lady went with my wife all the way to MD Anderson to sit there because we wanted to handle this thing, whatever it was. She got there. And the doctor looked at her. There's nothing we could do. You ever, you ever get that look where, where you exhaust every option? There's nothing we could do. Why, why you wanted us, why you allow us to take such a trip to tell us we can't do nothing? Our mistake was, Harry, we didn't put God first. We prayed, but we didn't really put him first. Sometimes we pray about things, but we don't put God first. Sometimes we do things, but we don't put God first. There's a saying, when you're at the end of your rope, you tie a knot and you hold on. And God will show up. When you're at the end of your rope, we was at the end of our rope. We tied a knot. We held on. Harry, we said, we came together and we decree God's word. We will live and not die to declare the works of my heavenly father. That's all it took. And you know what God was doing? Birthing a ministry. Whatever you're running from, God is going to birth a ministry. And he, he chose my wife. If it was me, I'd run and keep on running. But he knew her heart. He knew what he placed in her. God knows what he placed in each and every one of you. He knows. And he's saying, I'm the one who created you. I know how much I place in you. Seek me first. And watch what I'll do. Every day I see a miracle. So the, the little things that happen, these don't mean nothing no more. When God brings you out of something that magnificent, you could read all you want in the Bible. You could study the word, go to Bible class, Bible school, after school, evening school, PM school, morning school. You could hear it. But when you go through it, but when you go through, nobody could tell you any different. When you go through, when you experience it, that's when you realize God is in closing, one more, he showed me one more. In closing, Matthew 25, verse 21. These guys are good, I tell you. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. That's our ultimate call when we meet our Heavenly Father. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear from him, right? That deserve a hand clap for, him, for our Heavenly Father. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. A few things. He didn't say a lot. A few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your mass. Look, your mass happiness. Your master's joy. Come and share. He said, come and share your master's happiness. He's returning. He replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. A few things. Number nine, well done, good and faithful doers of a few things. Those that are doers of a few things, well done. That's what he's calling out to me. Faithfulness does not care how many or how big the assignment ta tasks are. 
but rather how diligent and honorably we do them. I'm going to pick on Bill over and over. Bill, Bill and Mikhail, basically, cueing the songs on the projector. It's just as important as singing and getting out here and, and narrating the songs. Those are examples. Sunday school teachers, classes, is just as honorable as speaking here on the pulpit. Whatever gifts God has placed in you is just as honorable. Whatever gifts he, do you know what you like to do? Do it for the Lord and see what he will do in return. As you see here, it brings him happiness. Come and share the master's happiness, you faithful servant. I'm turning it around. In Matthew 25, 23, I didn't give that to them this time. Well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. That's what he said. I love it. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Hallelujah. Throughout the Bible, God's plan for your life is always connected to a place. Throughout the Bible. He will honor you when you are in that place he wants you to be. This is the place. NBLC is the place. God is about to honor you if you faithfully serve him. This is the place God wants to honor you. You are in the right place, saints. And God wants to faithfully honor you. I thank God for the opportunity to remind me whose I am and whose I belong to. It is about God giving you the opportunity to be faithful and to do an assignment for him. And in so doing, he wants to hear himself, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what we all want to hear when we meet with him at the judgment seat. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear at this season. Bow your hearts with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning of your faithfulness. Heavenly Father, help us to put you first in everything that we do. Help us to honor you, Father. Let you get the glory in everything that we do, Lord Jesus. As we go through this life, let us put you first, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you consider us To be a reflection of who you are. Your grace. Your mercy. Your love. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you imparted in each and every one of us. Let us utilize those gifts to ultimately glorify you, Lord Jesus. And thank you for bringing family back into this nation, Lord Jesus. Because when things happen, Lord, it's all about family. It's all about loving one another thinking about one another, understanding each and every one and reaching out to them, Lord Jesus, in prayer, truly in concern of who and what are their needs. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you that your word went forth, Lord Jesus, and remind us of your faithfulness Throughout your word, Lord Jesus, you showed us, you demonstrate to us that you honor faithfulness. And we are thankful. We continue to give you the glory. We continue to give you the honor. And we continue to give you all the praise, Lord Jesus. Thank you for reminding me, Lord Jesus, 
that in those moments that we all are tarry and there's a gloom that you the, the God of light. You're the God of more than enough. You the healer. You the Je Jehovah Jireh, Lord Jesus. And we ought to seek you first in all areas of our lives. We give you the glory, honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory. For those who are going through today, who are in one of those moves that I was in. God is able. That's all I have to say. God is able. And he is willing and he wants us to step out of faith and he would part the waters. But he would only do it when we step out in faith because he is faithful. Come as you are, not what you think you want to be. Come as you are, naked before him. If you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, here's an opportunity to the altars are open. The elders, the deacons, our shepherds are here to pray with you. My thing right now, do not leave out of these doors if you don't know him. Because tomorrow is not promised. I thought back the night before the tornado came through. How many thoughts? How many people thought they had the next day? How many plans were made? Especially in this season. Oh, I got to run to Walmart or Target and get this gift for that person that... We got to put God first. And when you put God first, there's something about praising him. Lord, I thank you for what I got. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I glorify you. I got more than enough. Lord, I thank you. That's where he wants us to start. Lord, I thank you. Lord, help me look at my life at this season. And make adjustments for your glory. And to do, thus say the Lord. The altars are open. Do not let this opportunity go by without saying, Lord, I need you. I'm grateful for who you are in my life. This is truly the season of thanking him and glorifying him and worshiping him and watch and see his goodness as we saw it earlier. To God be the glory. The faithful servants, amen. Let us all stand this morning. Now, those of you who raise your hands to bring uh, some cookies and cakes next Sunday, we, at the end of the service, we'll have a little party, okay? Only because we're not doing a, a Christmas Eve service. It'll be our time to have a little uh, fellowship with each other. Would you put your hand in your heart this morning as we're dismissed? I know the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord calls his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his perfect peace. In the name of our Heavenly Father, the Lord God of hosts, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, the Son of the Most High God, in the name of Holy Spirit, who abides with us and in us, I bless you with every heavenly benediction in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Now you're going into a world that's cruel and dangerous. Let Christ be seen in you. And he will reward you because he honors faithfulness. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday as you come. Amen. God bless you.